Hello, and welcome to my character guide for the mercenary. All right, let's get the big old elephant in the room out of the way first. Is a melee class viable in this game? <sighs> yes. Yes, he is. In fact, not only is the mercenary viable, he's actually pretty good. His early game damage is fantastic, his scaling potential is very high, but most importantly, his skills are amazing. And I'd actually have to say that him being melee makes him insanely fun class to play, which to me is one of the most important factors in my choice of character. <laughs> Looking at you, engineer. Anyway, I'll keep this guide as concise as possible. I'll first go over my play style and how I make the mercenary work for me. I'll cover his different skills and their synergies in depth and also talk about the general approach to each stage and what you should be looking out for. I'll then go into some different item combos that work well on him and finally end this guide with some gameplay so you can see what I'm talking about happening in real time. Also, it should be noted that to unlock the mercenary, you must obliterate yourself from existence at the obliteration obelisk inside the celestial portal. You can trigger the spawn of a celestial portal every three stages after looping the game once. Basically, every time you see the snow level after the first time, you can take the portal. You also get five lunar coins for doing this, so if you need some coins, just go kill yourself at the portal. Let's begin with an overview of the mercenary's skills. Starting off his skills section, we actually have a passive, which is that the mercenary is able to double jump right off the bat. He is currently only one of two survivors in the game that has a passive, the other being Multi's retool. This jump actually helps quite a bit, especially in the early game, where mobility and traversing the map as efficiently as possible is key. Being able to jump twice, especially when combined with his shift and R, make him the fastest early game character if you use him correctly. Another important and kind of hidden attribute for the mercenary is that his base health region is more than double every other survivors. He sits at a base of 3.75 HP per second, while the rest just have one and a half. This enables you to play extremely aggressive in the earlier stages and offsets the fact that you're melee and need to be literally right up in the face of everything you kill. His auto attack also makes him a bit different, with every third strike dealing 300% damage instead of the usual 130. This makes stacking items that scale off your attack damage, such as sticky bombs and missiles, particularly effective if you proc them on the third hit. Now, you shouldn't really focus on only proccing them on the third hit, but rather just think of it as a nice bonus. It's very important to note that your current stage and your laser sword combo is not interrupted by your other skills. Essentially, you can do pretty much anything in between your auto attacks, so you should always be holding left click. The biggest tip I can give is that your right click, Whirlwind, will cancel the delay between your third hit on an enemy and the start of your next combo. Meaning if you use Whirlwind immediately after you hit the enemy with your 300% damage, you can immediately use the first attack of your next combo. This coupled with the fact that Sprinting does not cancel your attacks, helps pump up your DPS quite a bit due to always being on the move. One big downside to the Merc's early game is that he has a tough time with above ground enemies such as Wisps. His secondary and utility skills, Whirlwind and Blinding Assault, help in this regard. Whirlwind, if used on the ground, will strike horizontally in a circle around you, but if you use it while in the air, it will instead strike vertically. This also pushes you up in the air a fraction, so it can be used to close the gap to these enemies by simply jumping, maybe twice if you need it, and then using it to hit the otherwise out of range target. Blinding Assault, which is your shift key, is a dash that gets an additional use if you hit an enemy with it, up to a max of three uses total before going on cooldown. You have three seconds between each dash to use another, or else the skill will just go on cooldown. It's definitely worth using all of the charges due to its good damage and stun capability, so keep track of how long you have left on each charge. One of the best aspects to the Merc's gameplay is that he is constantly moving forward. This is due to every single one of his skills, minus his regular attack, giving you some kind of momentum. His special, Eviscerate, is a huge source of this momentum, and when used right before or after your blinding assault will propel you quite a large distance. Use the combo of shift plus R, or R plus shift, the order really doesn't matter, to traverse otherwise unreachable heights, such as large cliffs and titanic plains, or distant roost, the two starting zones. When approaching combat with a dangerous enemy, for the Merc these would be the Clay Dune Striders, Imp Overlords, Magma Worms, and especially Elder Lemurians. Oh boy, watch out for those guys. Make sure you always have an escape. While his R does dash you forward, the movement will end upon the first enemy hit, and thus it isn't reliable as an escape when dealing with groups of enemies, because the auto-target capability will end up hardly moving you at all. It'll just target the first thing and then you'll stop. Therefore, his shift is the best form of escape. Since you have a three second window between using a charge, provided you actually hit an enemy, and the cooldown starting, I usually like to keep up one charge while I DPS these high risk enemies just in case something puts me at risk of dying. Now, this isn't the case 100% of the time because it does do pretty good damage and it stuns, especially because you can avoid the danger of melee bosses entirely, which are the titans and the imp overlords, by continually jumping off their backside and staying out of their hitboxes. So, it's all situational. Also, Wandering Vagrants are a joke on the mercenary 
because you can just stand on top of them and continually use your mouse one and mouse two while all of their attacks just hit the ground. The only danger is when they get to low HP and use their massive charge blast. Simply save your R for this moment because while you're in your R, you are completely immune to hits. Now this doesn't mean you're immune to damage. If you have a DOT on you before you press R, it will still damage you inside of your R, so keep that in mind. To pull this off 100% of the time, you need to wait about two and a half seconds after the Vagrant begins the charge blast and then use your R. If you use the R immediately after they start charging, your invulnerability will expire before the blast goes off and you'll probably die. To sum this entire section up, Mercenary is an extremely high risk, high reward character. He is very mobile and I've found the best results by simply going nuts in close range and only backing off when I have no skills up to use and I'm at risk of getting piled on. Otherwise, I'm always in combat and dealing damage. If you have any questions or would like some more tips, let me know in the comments below. Let's move on to some great item synergies. As mentioned in the overview section, Merc is always on the move. This, combined with his capability of using left click while sprinting, means Rose Bucklers are amazing on him. Each one gives you additional damage reduction while sprinting, so if you have a habit of pressing your sprint key immediately after using your skills, you should get this mitigation a large portion of the time, if not always. Goat Hooves and Energy Drinks are also amazing. However, I value the hooves higher than the drinks because the distance of your dashes, your shift and your R, scale with your current movement speed. The hooves give you the movement speed all the time versus just when sprinting, so their effect is more noticeable to me. The leeching seeds and harvester sites are your primary sources of healing, so stacking crit and attack speed are also key, so you can proc these all the time. You can get to the point where your entire like 2k HP pool will be refilled off of a single use of your R, making it a very good skill to use in emergency, especially due to its invulnerability. Medkits and monster teeth are also very reliable sources of healing because you will be hit a lot when playing the mercenary. Don't worry about stacking these items endlessly because their effects aren't really that good when stacked, but definitely pick up a few of them, especially if you see them in the early game, because their effects can end up saving your life. Life. Every bit of mitigation for small continuous hits, such as the Wisps and the Lemurians, requires some form of mitigation or recovery, or else your HP pool will just be in a dangerous spot more often than not. Teddy bears are absolutely amazing on everyone, but as you are a melee class after all, getting five or six of these bad boys will end up paying off substantially in the long run. I can't tell you how many times I've lived from a massive group of Wisps gatting me down due to blocking two or three hits. Ukulele is probably your best friend on the mercenary because he has such a hard time with large groups of flying enemies. The ukulele procs will easily chain to the flying enemies and because it and the Tesla proc your on hit effects, this makes it so one or two of the chains wipe the entire group. Finally, attack speed is amazing on everyone. Okay. Amazing is a bit of an exaggeration on our girl Artificer, but who cares? But it is crazy on Mercenary because the amount of hits your R does scales with your attack speed, much like your dash distance scales with movement speed. The more attack speed you get, the more hits your R does, meaning the more chances for on-hit effects and healing to go off. So always look for some syringes, circa pauldrons, and predatory instincts. All right, and that sums up just about everything I wanted to cover for the Mercenary. If you have any more tips and advice, leave a comment below and let me know what your Merc's playstyle is like. Enjoy the gameplay of my Mercenary, but before I reroll the clips, we have a Discord now. Now, boys click the link in the description or in my pinned comment to join the server post some memes search for a group to play with ask some questions about the game and items we got a little bit of everything in there so if you're interested in that kind of stuff come and join the wooly discord server also all these clips are taken from my live stream at twitch.tv slash wooly gaming it's all one word twitch.tv slash wooly gaming so if you enjoy them consider following me there as well thank you for watching and enjoy the clips oh tesla um no i think tesla you get as a world drop just uh you already get it if you search it on the Risk Grant 2 wiki, do we have a gesture? Hold up. Oh, yes, we have a gesture, boys. Should we get shape glass? You guys want to do a shape glass run? Hold on, let's look over here real quick. Oh, a clover? Oh, okay, so I could trade for that and then trade to get a clover. I, I have to do that. I absolutely have to do that. Bye bye, sticky bombs. I have to get a clover. This is a disgusting start. Holy crap. You guys think shape glass or no? I'm doing it. I don't even care. Ah! This is the run. Oh my word. Goodbye, Stone Titan. Bye bye. What we get? Wax quill? Okay. I'll take it. Oh, come on, man. We're playing the wrong class. Feels bad, man. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this run is disgusting, man. Are you kidding me? Within the first 16 minutes, we have two sticky bombs, a gesture, shaped glass, with clover, and a behemoth. Oh, my gosh. We just need HP and defense. I might not even farm the other Lindor chest. Jeez, man. Oh, medkit. That's actually kind of nuts for early game. 
I'm saying if my capacitor is off cooldown, which it's not, so do the Batman. Probably like two hit these guys. How about two hit them? Like ten. I gotta really play safe though behind the wall over here. As soon as they start lasering like that, get me out of here. Ugh. Oh, he's not even hitting me. Huh? Oh! Bye bye. I think I think Chris are super strong already as is. And I guess the the argument for stacking Chris would be well once you have ten glasses or nine glasses a scythe and a uh, a predatory then there's no point in getting crit but I'm fine with that because it's super strong. There's already tons of broken combos in this game. I don't think we need uh, <laughs> more. I'd rather have some balance on the ones that already exist, like sticky bombs. There's my lockbox. Oh, another boucle. Not bad. Our personal shield generators are extremely strong with ga glass. Its value doesn't get. Yeah, yeah. Shield generators are definitely strong. But it is shield at the, at the same time. So if you lose it, then you have to be out of combat. And it's no better than like a slut. What happened to my HP? We lived, but wow. That was a lot of damage. So you basically just have to treat it like a slug at that point and wait for it to recharge. But yeah, it, it's strong for sure. Come on, don't let me down, Shrine. You let me down right now. All right, we're not doing Shrine. Crowbar, I think I take the crowbar. And that's why we take the crowbar. Because we have a capacitor. Wait, do we have a blue portal again? Or is that Celestial? Yeah, we have a blue portal and another Celestial. Or, uh, we have another blue and a Celestial. Nice. But I don't have any enough coins. I'll, I could go in and trade my green items. What do I have for greens? I have the fuel cells. Uh, I kind of don't want to lose fuel cells, honestly. I don't have enough of this chest. Dang it. Come on, monsters. Come to me. Let's open up this for now. The bot, what? Hello? What else do I have though? So I have fuel cells, quail, buckler. I could lose literally every green item I have right now, except for maybe one side. Hmm, I'll think about it. Ah, no, 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 no. We're, we're not staying near these guys. No, no, no. It's just because there's four of them. We're just gonna chill over here. Can we kill this guy? Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna hit him. Why would you go there, capacitor? Honestly, I'm just gonna chill out here. <laughs> I'm gonna play it super safe. Whoa! Relax! Ooh! Ooh! That was a big hit. Holy crap! My word. Bye bye! Another no way, dude. This is disgusting. I have to get a soul. I'm, I mean, I'm taking the portal because if it's soul bound in the the blue portal, that would be just nuts. Talk about sticky bombs. Got 40 with the order trying to make myself. Yeah, sticky bombs are just gross. They're, they're the only item in the game currently that stacks with both. Uh, sorry, with more stacks that gives you increased chance and increased damage. It's the only item. That's why. Oh no, I already had one game, but that's alright. I'll take another one. Oh my dude, we are broken right now. What's going on? Oh, there's the uh here's the engineer gameplay engineer. Here's the mercenary gameplay I needed. So we can play a different class after this, boys. I'll just have to take it from my bot again and hopefully it'll get copyright strike. Like I did on my artificer one.
Coolie, uh, do you have the uh, pressure capacitor use the same target as the pink system to off the targets? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, you don't even have to look at them, honestly. It's like the first thing that even comes remotely close to your path gets marked. That's what, oh, that could've been bad. Let me not get freaking clamped by a golem here. I'm gonna go open the legendary chest over here, or large chest, not legendary. But yeah, I agree. Uh, ping system just doesn't work right now. I mean, it does, but oh, perfect. But it's definitely not where, like I have literally pointed right at an item like this, and it'll ping like right underneath it instead of on the item. So I agree, the, the capacitor targeting has to be like that. Hapu, nice, okay. Go, go, go. Which one's the blue portal? Is it this one? I think it's this one. Well, it tells me, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Um, pretty sure that's Celestial. That is Celestial. I'm taking this one. All right, boys. We want a soul-bound catalyst. That is the only item we want right now. An incredibly expensive build where you build as much reason as possible to AFK while you kill everything with skulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the uh, Nukahanas. So you just need bustling fungus on the engineer and the Nukahanas, and then you're OP. All right, there wasn't even a gesture, boy. Wait, no, there was a gesture. I don't have any coins. Feels bad. What we got? The hooks. Um, nah, I don't need hooks. I'm not gonna risk losing my fuel cells. Worth a shot. Worth All right, what we got? Imp Overlord, first boss. I'll take it. Who's already dead? Nope. Nope. I knew that was gonna happen. Why? Why? Why did I go near that thing? I was playing so well up until that point. Oh, let's just go near the Imp Overlord, guys.